This is video 7 in topic 10 on how does a compass work. In this video we're going to be looking at the force between two current carrying wires. Now as a result of the formula F is equal to BIL sine theta which describes the force felt by a current in the magnetic field Combined with the equation B is equal to mu naught I over 2 pi R, which describes the magnetic field around a current carrying wire. We can understand that there should be a force between two parallel current carrying wires. Now, this is because imagine that this one here is wire 1. Wire 1, if there's a current flowing through it, generates a magnetic field. So this magnetic field wraps around here like this, so it's coming towards you, say, at wire 2 here. So wire 2 is now a current carrying wire inside a magnetic field, the magnetic field produced by wire 1 here. And so this means that wire 2 must feel a force. Let's now derive an equation to describe the size of and direction of the force felt by wire 2. Okay, so here we have wire 1 and here we have wire 2. Let's start by assuming that the current is flowing in the same direction in each of these wires. In this case, we have the force felt by wire 2 is equal to B I L sine theta. Now this magnetic field is the magnetic field which is caused by wire 1. So we have that B is due to wire 1 is equal to mu naught I1. This is I1, the current in wire 1. This one up here is the current in wire 2 over 2 pi R. Let's call the distance between these two wires D. And so we've got the, that the magnetic field at a distance d, so here at y2, is equal to mu naught i1 over 2 pi d. And now let's calculate the direction of that, or work out the direction of that. In this diagram, if you wrap your fingers around the wire and point your thumb up in the direction of i1, then you can see that the magnetic field lines are coming out the page at i2. So um, out of page or out of screen. So now what we can do is we can substitute this B in here. So we have the force felt by wire 2 is equal to mu naught I1 over 2 pi D times, and then this is I2. Now this L, this is the length of the parallel wires carrying current. So L in this diagram is from there to there. If we had wires which were just parallel for a short length, the L would be this length here. Now, sine theta, that's the angle between the magnetic field caused by wire 1, which is up out of the page, and the current flowing through wire 2. So when we've got parallel wires, these are always going to be at 90 degrees. So this is always going to be sine 90, which is equal to 1. And so we have that the force felt by wire 2 is equal to mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 L on D. And now let's just work out if this is an attractive or a repulsive force. To work out the direction of the force, put your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers point up out of the page, out of the screen, and so you can see that the force is going to be in a direction back towards wire 1, so towards wire 1. Now, if we were to flip the direction of one of these currents, say the current I2, then the force would be away from wire 1. So the force will be repulsive. If the currents travel in opposite directions. But when they're traveling in the same direction, then it's an attractive force. 
OK, so let's now check our prediction with this demonstration here. Now, in this case, I've got a current flowing out of here. When I close the switch, it'll go through the switch and into this red wire here. The red wire goes up here, so the current flows down here, and then it flows up the other side before going through the blue wire back to our battery here. So if it's flowing down here and up here, then we've got currents flowing in opposite directions. And we just predicted that if we had currents flowing in opposite directions, there should be a repulsive force between those two wires. So let's now switch the switch. Again, we've got very high currents here, so we're only going to keep the switch closed for a very short time and see if there is indeed a repulsive force between our two. Did you see when I switched the switch how the wires moved apart? Let's just have another look at that. Okay. Now what we can actually do is we can make it so that the current flows in the same direction between the two wires. So if you remember back to the electric circuits that we did in the streetlight topic, what we're going to need now is these wires to be in parallel. So, <coughs> so how I'm going to do that? going to disattach the power cable from up here. I shall attach these two wires to each other here and reattach this power cable down the bottom here. So what happens now is when the current flows through the batteries, it, can, it passes from this red wire and it can go up both of these wires here. And when it gets to the top here, it goes through this blue wire and returns back to the battery. So we now have the situation where the currents are both flowing in the same direction. And we made the prediction that in this case, these wires should feel an attractive force. So let's check our prediction. There we go. They're sticking together a bit down here. So they are feeling a force of attraction for each other. And again. Okay, let's do a worked example now of how we may want to use this equation. So the question is, a current carrying loop with I2 is equal to 7.5 amps is set up next to a current carrying wire with I1 is equal to 10 amps as shown in the diagram. Ignore any external forces such as gravity. Part A, calculate the net force on side 1. B, calculate the net force on side 2. C, comment on the relationship between the forces on sides 2 and 4. D, calculate the net force on the loop. OK, so to answer part A, we're going to need to consider the force on this part of the wire here, side 1. And so this is going to come from wire 1 and also from the opposite side on wire 2. There will be force from wire 4 and wire 2 because both of these are generating a magnetic field through which this current is flowing but because these are in opposite directions and there's always an element which is the same distance away from wire 1 the contributions from sides 2 and 4 will completely cancel each other out and we can ignore them. OK, so let's calculate, first of all, the force due to wire 1. So let's call this F on side 1 due to wire 1. And this is equal to mu naught over 2 pi I1 I2 over D times L. And so that's 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over 2 pi times 10 times 7.5. Now D, that's the distance, so that's 10 centimetres and L, that's the length, so that's the 20 centimetres. So solving this one on the calculator, we get 3.0 times 10 to the minus 7 newtons, and because these are parallel, this is towards wire 1. And now we've got the force on side 1 due to side 3. We use this same formula here, substituting in 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over 2 pi. In this case, the two currents, the two wires we've got are both 7.5 amps as it's flowing around this loop. So this is 7.5 times 7.5.
over the distance between them, which is 0 0.10, times the length, which is 0 0.20. So solving that one on the calculator, we get 2.25 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. Sorry, this one was also 10 to the minus 5 newtons. And one now these two are a repulsive force, so this one's going to feel the force towards wire 1. So towards wire 1. So because both these forces are in the same direction, we've got our net force is just the sum of them. So let's call that the net on side 1. It is equal to 3 plus 2.25 times 10 to the minus 5, which is equal to 5.25 newton oh, times 10 to the minus 5 newtons towards wire 1. Okay, and now we do the same thing for this second wire here. So the force on side 3 due to wire 1, just substituting in, we've got 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 times 7.5 times 10 over 2 pi times 0 0.20 and then we've got the distance on the bottom as well. The distance is equal to, in this case, the 10 centimetres plus the 10 centimetres, so 0 0.20. So these two actually cancel out. And then solving that one on the calculator, we get 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons away from wire 1. That's because side 3 and wire 1 have currents flowing in opposite directions and the force on side 3 due to side 1 just substituting again into this formula 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7 over 2 pi times now in this case we've got 7.5 amps flowing through both wire so 7.5 times 7.5 the distance between them is 10 centimeters and the length is 20 centimeters so solving that, we get 2.25 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons away from wire 1. So you can see this is the same as that and opposite. And so the F3 net is equal to 1.5 plus 2.25 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons away from from wire 1. Okay, and now part C. Comment on the relationship between the forces on sides 2 and 4. Okay, now the forces on sides 2 and 4 are going to come about because of the magnetic fields set up by wire 1 as well as by wire 2. But be, these are going to be the same at every point. Now, the forces on wire 2 and wire 4 are going to come about because of their interaction with the magnetic field which has been set up by wire 1 and wire 2 at each point. So at this end, close to side 1, we're going to have magnetic field lines going into the screen. And so you can see this current using our right hand rule is the one up the top is going to feel a force upwards while the one down below is going to feel a force downwards at this end of the wire and so these forces are going to be equal in magnitude because we've got the same current flowing through each of the wires and we've got the same magnetic field strength because we're the same distance away from each of these wires and so what we're going to find is that for every little increment along this wire that holds true. The forces are equal and opposite. So the forces on sides 2 and 4 are equal and opposite and so they will completely cancel each other out if we consider the forces on the loop. So the forces on sides 2 and 4 are equal and opposite. Okay, so part D, we're now asked to calculate the net force around the loop. So all we need to do is add up the force on each side. We've said 2 and 4 are equal and opposite, so they cancel out. So F net 
will equal the net force on side one, which is larger than the net force on side two, side three. If we add these two together, we get 3.75 times 10 to the minus five newtons. And so 3.75 is less than 5.25. So we've got 5.25 minus 3.75 times 10 to the minus 5, which is equal to 1.5 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons. And then this is in this direction towards wire 1. So in this video, you've seen the force between two current carrying wires. You've seen that the size of the force can be calculated using the formula B is equal to mu naught on 2 pi I1 times I2L divided by D. And you've seen that when the current is travelling in the same direction, this is an attractive force. When the currents travel in opposite directions, we've got a repulsive force. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some uses of current carrying wires. Thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video.